This is problem number one of the 57th International Math Olympiad 2016 held this month in Hong Kong. As usual for geometric problems, let's make a drawing. We'll start with a picture of a rhombus with equal length of each side that we will denote by letter A and two axes of symmetry, vertical and horizontal, which contain two diagonals of this rhombus which are perpendicular by sectors of each other. That is the known property of a rhombus. And let's denote the angle between the vertical diagonal and a side of this rhombus by Greek letter alpha. Let's also inscribe the right triangle BFC into the triangle GAC required by this problem in such a way that triangle BFA is the isosceles triangle, so that angle ABF has also measurement alpha, and so angle BFC has measurement 2 alpha. This is because angles BFC and BFA are supplementary angles. Also, it follows from this drawing that angle with measurement 2 alpha must be less than 90 degrees angle because it's an internal angle of a right triangle BFC. And the other internal angle of the same triangle, angle BCF, is 90 degrees minus 2 alpha. It must be less than angle GCA, which measures 1 alpha. From this, we obtained inequality 90 degrees minus 2 alpha must be less than alpha, which determines pretty narrow range for angle alpha that makes such construction possible. Alpha must be greater than 30 degrees and less than 45 degrees. To complete the drawing, we'll add point M, the midpoint of hypotenuse FC of triangle BFC and another isosceles triangle AED with base AD and the same two angles measuring alpha at the base AD. And if you know geometry from the fact that two angles CAD and ADE have the same measurement alpha, it follows that line segment ED is parallel to the line segment AC. Actually, to almost complete this drawing, we need to add one more point, X, which is the point of intersection of uh, extension of segment ED parallel to, to the segment AM and the line that passes through point M and is parallel to the segment AE which construct parallelogram AEXM required by this problem. We are supposed to prove in this problem that straight line segments BD, FX and ME are concurrent. These line segments are not on this drawing yet. We'll draw them later. Since the dimensions of this construction are not given, we can arbitrarily set, for example, the length of segment FM which is the radius of the circumcircle of triangle BFC, to 1. First, let's calculate the length of side BF of triangle BFC. The hypotenuse of this triangle is the diameter of the circumcircle, which has length 2, and so the length of segment BF is 2 times cosine of 2 alpha, which is the measurement of angle BFC. And by definition, the length of segment AF is also 2 times cosine of 2 alpha. So the length of segment AC is the sum of the length of diameter of the circumcircle BFC, which is 2, plus the length of segment AF, which is 2 times cosine of 2 alpha. This length squared is, by the law of cosines, in triangle ACG equals A squared plus A squared minus 2A squared times cosine of 180 degrees minus 2 alpha. And since cosine of 180 degrees minus 2 alpha equals minus cosine of 2 alpha, we get the formula for A squared inside the box on the diagram. Also, we can see two similar triangles 
in this diagram. EAD and ACG. Both triangles are isosceles. Each has two angles measuring alpha. From this similarity, we can get the equality of ratio AE to A and A to the length of segment AC. This, combined with the formula for A squared, gives us the important result the length of segment AE is 1. This result immediately helps to establish the important fact that segments BF and FE lie on one straight line. We can prove it if we drop a perpendicular from point E on segment AF with foot T, then the length of segment AT is 1 times cosine 2 alpha. If we recall that length of segment AF is 2 cosine of 2 alpha, then we see that segment ET is the perpendicular bisector of segment AF which means that triangle AEF is isosceles triangle and its angle AFE also measures 2 alpha. So the two opposite angles BFC and AFE are congruent, which means that three points BFE lie on one straight line segment BE. All the line segments that have length equal to 1 are shown on this diagram in the red color. Let's look at all of them. FM and MC are two radii of the circumcircle of triangle BFC, and we have arbitrarily set their length to 1. AE and FE have length 1, as we have proved earlier. ED has length 1, because triangle AED is isosceles triangle by definition of this problem. MX is the side of a parallelogram AEXM and is the opposite side to the side AE. And the last segment MD has length 1 because it's the side of a parallelogram FEDM. It is a parallelogram because its two opposite sides FM and ED are parallel and congruent. And MD is the opposite side of side FE. And because all four sides have length 1, this is not just a parallelogram, but a rhombus. And its two diagonals, painted in blue color, are bisectors of each other, which is the property of any rhombus. Since AM and EX are congruent, and since FM and ED are congruent, we can conclude that AF and DX are congruent, and by definition of this problem, segments AF and BF are congruent. We have that segments BF and DX are congruent, and if we add to them segments FE and ED, we will obtain that BE and EX are congruent, which means that triangle BEX is isosceles, and so BF dx inscribed in this triangle is an isosceles trapezoid and since we know that the blue segment em is a perpendicular bisector of the top side fd of the trapezoid bf dx we can conclude that this line em and two diagonals of this trapezoid bd and fx are concurrent we're done